If you are here to know which values are the best for your mouse, long story short, 125Hz for doing slow but very accurate work, 500Hz is in the middle and 1000Hz for quick but not accurate work. This video is made as my own experiment because of my curiosity and I need watch time. The information in this video is not made to be perfect, so if you have any disagreement, please tell me in the comments. This idea blinked in my head when I was playing CSGO and expecting I would not get bored of it. I haven't been enjoying CSGO for the past 6 months for some reason. That's why you can see my settings looking different in every video. But what I exactly changed my interest from changing the settings? Well, if you ask me, I, I don't know. But the thing I find changing so much that I have to readapt my muscle memory and probably expect to last in the game for a week is some physical hardware changes. Oh my god, your words are too advanced and dirty for me. Please help. Well, I find changing some mouse settings really spices things up. At least for me, I was just casually stumbling around my Razer Synapse and I saw this option that I haven't really been touching for the past year. So casual me changes it and made the script. How to find my polling rate? Well, polling rate is the frequency of data updates. For the device, said Razer Synapse, the description is just so accurate and faked in the same time. To make things clearer, I found this little website that tests your mouse polling rate in case if you are curious of your own ones. I'm not sponsored from BenQ or any other brands, which it would, but to test your mouse out, you obviously do as it says. Click your mouse once and start moving it. On the right corner of the screen, you will see the constant polling rate by moving your mouse. Make sure you move your mouse like if you are playing in-game. I recommend to have your mouse moving for at least 10 seconds and then click your left button once to see your results. Normally, the estimated average polling rate is pretty accurate. As you can see, I set my mouse to 125Hz and the website managed to find my polling rate. So what now? I knew my polling rate, but I couldn't change it. How much polling rate does my mouse support? Actually, to be honest, I am not a hacker so I don't know. But wait. What you can obviously do is research on the internet related to your mouse model. If you manage to find it, try to find the program to customize your mouse. Normally, if you're using a gaming mouse, you would easily find the program. When you installed it, you have to really just go through these menus to look for the polling rate menu. It shouldn't take you long because polling rate sometimes is a overlooked feature, so most brands would make it more visible in their programs. What? Most of y'all have a cheap mouse and obviously doesn't have a program to program customize it. Well, there is no other way, but you should know how to use polling rate to your own advantage, which I'm gonna move it to the next point. What is actually polling rate? Polling rate is the amount of data sent to your computer from your mouse. Let's say your mouse sensed a 2 inch movement. So your mouse sends the information back to the computer and to your screen. The DPI here also plays a small role. DPI is dot per inch or the amount of pixel movement in every inch. The higher your DPI, the faster your mouse. Most gaming mouse has a high DPI because they simply can't. But why does anyone think it would be a good idea to add 16,000 DPI to a mouse and expect someone to use it? It's simply because the mouse sensor is good and it's capable of these many dots. Or maybe you have a 16K monitor and you need it to slide around your desktop, which in case, good for you. Well, the point of learning what's DPI to know what's polling rate is in fact related. When your mouse DPI is low as well as your polling rate, you will notice some jackiness to your movement. I launched CSGO to get this a test, which in fact, I found out the meaning of mouse input lag. See, lower DPI means slower mouse movement speed. If your mouse couldn't send 
the data fast enough, you will notice a few milliseconds of delay. One more thing I noticed playing with low DPI and high in-game sense is the snappy and jaggy feeling, which make your mouse movement like if you're climbing on pixel stairs. At the moment, we will look more on polling rate first. If you want a DPI-based video, tell me in the comments. To really push my test of polling rate, I brought up the numbers. I found this website that converts hertz to milliseconds. For 125 hertz, it is 8 milliseconds. For 500 hertz, it's 2 milliseconds. And 1000 hertz is 1 milliseconds. This really tickles your brain. I don't even know when I spend milliseconds. How would that physically affect my performance. It's insane. It's simply an illusion. When we say, where is my milliseconds? Because every millisecond to your computer is sending data in and out. Basically, the computer treats milliseconds like it's seconds. It's just much faster. The computer goes through many things at once. Well, still, you don't get the answer why the milliseconds of information can be valuable. That's why running a test is so important. It's not what the values are, it's the user's feeling. I can't really capture the real-time changes with because my phone simply can't. The obvious thing when you first have a higher polling rate is your mouse is like moving faster. That's because your mouse is sending info much faster than it used to be. Therefore, this is actually an illusion. Your mouse is not moving faster. Your mouse is sending more data to your computer. There is also a small argument I see on YouTube about the high poly rate will make your CPU more busy. Well, I think that this can be a little true because your computer has to process so much more data now compared to a lower poly rate. It has to produce so much more changes every milliseconds. But at a certain extent, it would barely affect your in-game performance. I assume you'll play FPS games. Most FPS games run based on your GPU. And that's why people meme up a potato GPU versus God's GPU. If your game run based on your CPU, you wouldn't notice much of a difference. It'll probably go up to a 0.03% CPU utilization. Well, I guess this myth is just an overhyped topic. Well, back to the start. What's the reason I gave every polling rate a purpose? I didn't simply give a role, obviously. I ran many tests on playing with each polling rate for my mouse. What really surprised me is the lower polling rate, the easier I can hit my enemies in CSGO. However, playing with a higher polling rate would be so much more of a pain when it comes to aiming in Counter-Strike. However, playing with a higher polling rate would be so much easier in games like Dota 2 or League of Legends. My best guess for the better aim in FPS games like CSGO is that I get more time to micro-correct my movement or I simply spend more time with a lower polling rate. That doesn't mean anything. I've spent a year using 1000 polling rate. How can I not have the good aim like I used to have? Again, my best guess is simply my monitor. See, I can play with a 1000 polling rate mouse and I still can have my aim as accurate as I want. But one of the biggest excuses of not being able to aim well is my monitor hurts simply can't produce enough frames. My monitor is just an ordinary office monitor. It has 60 hertz and some customizations features. If you haven't played on a 60 hertz monitor before, feel my pain, yo. I can simply see frames jacking when it comes to a messy fight in CSGO. That's because my monitor is only capable of displaying 60 frames at a second. However, when you play on a 144 hertz, you will feel a smoother movement to your game. So another problem comes. Why does your monitor hertz even affect your mouse polling rate. Should answer, I need some more time to go through my jacked frames. Therefore, I don't want so much data being sent to my computer from my mouse. For those stretch resolution gamers, it's safer to go with a lower polling rate because you simply don't want to have any micro unwanted movement sent to your computer. It's extremely useful when it comes to holding angles at a head level. For productivity and gamers, I picked 500Hz or little higher than 125 because I needed to be faster when it comes to editing effects, dragging clips, and casting spells in game. For productivity, like 
video editors, polling rate doesn't matter, but you should consider lowering it when you are working on a lower resolution. I hope this video gave you guys an overall understanding of polling rate and helped you with the decision if you want to buy that new gaming mouse because of the high polling rate. I'm doing an experiment on this video as well. Please like the video because I will get more audience if you just make it turn blue. And make sure you subscribe for more content like this I guess. I'm